Hello, squirrel listeners. TGIFers. We are on chapter 41 of Anne of the Island. Love takes up the glass of time. I've come up to ask you to go for one of our old-timey rambles through September woods and over hills where spices grow this afternoon, said Gilbert, coming slowly around the porch corner. Suppose we'll visit Hester Gray's garden. You know how Anne loves that. Anne, sitting on the stone step with her lap full of a pale, filmy green stuff, looked up rather blankly. Oh, I wish I could, she said slowly, but I really can't, Gilbert. I'm going to Alice Penhalla's wedding this evening, you know. I've got to do something to this dress. And by the time it's finished, I'll have to get ready. I'm so sorry. I'd love to go. Well, can you go tomorrow afternoon then? Asked Gilbert, apparently not much disappointed. Yes, I think so. In that case, I shall hie me home at once to do something I should otherwise have to do tomorrow. So Alice Penhallow is to be married tonight. Three weddings for you in one summer, Anne. Phil's, Alice's, and Jane's. I'll never forgive Jane for not inviting me to her wedding. You really can't blame her when you think of the tremendous Andrew's connection who had to be invited. The house could hardly hold them all. I was only bidden by the grace of being Jane's old chum, at least on Jane's part. I think Mrs. Harmon's motive for inviting me was to let me see Jane's surpassing gorgeousness. Is it true that she wore so many diamonds that you couldn't tell where the diamonds left off and Jane began and laughed? She certainly wore a good many, what with all the diamonds and white satin and tulle and lace and roses and orange blossoms. Prim little Jane was almost lost to sight, but she was very happy. And so was Mr. Inglis, and so was Mrs. Harmon. Is that the dress you're going to wear tonight? asked Gilbert, looking down at the fluffs and frills. Yes, isn't it pretty? And I shall wear star flowers in my hair. The haunted wood is full of them this summer. Gilbert had a sudden vision of Anne arrayed in a frilly green gown with the virginal curves of arms and throat slipping out of it and white stars shining against the coils of her ruddy hair. Ruddy hair. <laughs> the vision made him catch his breath, but he turned lightly away. Well, I'll be up tomorrow. I hope you'll have a nice time tonight. Anne looked after him as he strode away inside. Gilbert was friendly, very friendly, far too friendly. He had come quite often to Green Gables after his recovery, and something of their old comradeship had returned, but Anne no longer found it satisfying. The rose of love made the blossom of friendship pale and scentless by contrast. And Anne had again begun to doubt if Gilbert now felt anything for her but friendship. I swanee. It's always something. I thought after he got better, they'd just... Oh, mercy me. And Anne had... Uh, just said that. In the common light of common day, her radiant certainty of that rap morning had faded. She was haunted by a miserable fear that her mistake could never be rectified. It was quite likely that it was Christine whom Gilbert loved after all. Perhaps he was even engaged to her and tried to put all unsettling hopes out of her heart and reconcile herself to a future where work and ambition must take the place of love. She could do good, if not noble, work as a teacher, and, she, and the success her little sketches were beginning to meet within certain editorial sanctums augured well for her budding literary dreams, but, but Anne picked up her green dress and sighed again. When, Anne, and when Gilbert came the next afternoon, he found Anne waiting for him, fresh as the dawn and far fair as a star after all the gaiety of the preceding night. 
She wore a green dress, not the one she had worn to the wedding, but an old one which Gilbert had told her at a Redmond reception he liked especially. It was just the shade of green that brought out the rich tints of her hair, and the starry gray of her eyes and the iris-like delicacy of her skin. Gilbert, glancing at her sideways as they walked along a shadowy wood path, wood path thought she had never looked so lovely. Anne, glancing sideways at Gilbert now and then, thought how much older he looked since his illness. It was as if he had put boyhood behind him forever. The day was beautiful and the way was beautiful. Anne was almost sorry when they reached Hester Gray's garden and sat down on the old bench, but it was beautiful there too. As beautiful as it had been on that faraway day of the golden picnic, when Diana and Jane and Priscilla and she had found it. Then it had been lovely with Narcissus and Violets. Now Goldenrod had kindled its fairy torches in the corners, and asters dotted it bluely. The call of the brook came up through the woods from the Valley of Birches with all its old allurement. The mellow air was full of the purr of the sea, Beyond were fields rimmed by fences bleached silvery gray in the suns of many summers, mm -hmm. and long hills scarfed with the shadows of autumnal clouds. With the blowing of the west wind, old dreams returned. I think, said Anne softly, that the land where dreams come true is in the blue haze yonder over that little valley. Have you any unfulfilled dreams, Anne? said Gilbert. Something in his tone, something she had not heard since that miserable evening in the orchard at Patty's place made Anne's heart beat wildly, but she made but she made answer lightly. Of course, everybody has. It wouldn't do for us to have all our dreams fulfilled. We would be as good as dead if we had nothing left to dream about. What a delicious aroma that low descending sun is extracting from the asters and ferns. I wish we could see perfumes as well as smell them. I sh I'm sure they'd be very beautiful. Gilbert was not to be thus sidetracked. I have a dream, he said slowly. I persist in dreaming it, although it has often seemed to me that it could never come true. I dream of a home with a fire hearth in it, a cat and dog, the footsteps of friends, and you. Anne wanted to speak, but she could find no words. Happiness was breaking over her like a wave. It almost frightened her. I asked you a question over two years ago, Anne. If I ask again today, will you give me a different answer? Still, Anne could not speak. But she lifted her eyes, shining with all the love rapture of a countless of countless generations, and looked into his for a moment. He wanted no other answer. They lingered in the old garden until twilight, sweet as dusk in Eden must have been, crept over it. There was so much to talk over and recall, things said and done, and heard and thought and felt and misunderstood. I thought you loved Christine Stewart, Anne told him as reproachfully as if she had not given him every reason to suppose, to suppose that she loved Roy Gardner. Gilbert laughed boyishly. Christine was engaged to somebody in her hometown. I knew it, and she knew I knew it. When her brother graduated, he told me his sister was coming to Kingsport the next winter to take music and asked me if I would look after her a bit, as she knew no one and would be very lonely, so I did. And then I liked Christine for her own sake. She is one of the nicest girls I've ever known. I knew college gossip credited us, credited us with being in love with each other. I didn't care. Nothing mattered much to me for a time there. After you told me you could never love me, Anne, there was nobody else. There never could be anybody else for me but you. I've loved you ever since that day you broke your slate over my head in school. 
I don't see how you could keep on loving me when I was such a little fool, said Anne. Well, I tried to stop, said Gilbert, frankly. Not because I thought you what you call yourself, but because I felt sure there was no chance for me after Gardner came on the scene. But I couldn't, and I can't tell you either what it's meant to me these two years to believe you were going to marry him and be told every week by some busybody that your engagement was on the point of being announced. I believed it until one blessed day when I was sitting up after the fever, I got a letter from Phil Gordon, Phil Blake, rather. Doggone it. Sorry, I messed up. So, Phil Blake, brother, in which she told me there was really nothing between you and Roy and, and advised me to try again. Well, the doctor was amazed at my rapid recovery after that. So he got better because he thought he had a chance with Lynn. Anne laughed, then shivered. I could never forget the night I thought you were dying, Gilbert. Oh, I knew, I knew then, and I thought it was too late. But it wasn't, sweetheart. Oh, Anne, this makes up for everything, doesn't it? Let's resolve to keep this day sacred to perfect beauty all our lives for a gift has for the gift it has given us. It's the birthday of our happiness, said Anne softly. I've always loved this old garden of Hester Gray's and now it will be dearer than ever. But I'll have to ask you to wait a long time. Anne, said Gilbert sadly, it will be three years before I'll finish my medical course, and even then there will be no diamond sunburst in marble halls. Anne laughed. I don't want sunburst in marble halls. I just want you. You see, I'm quite as shameless as Phil about it. Starburst and marble halls may all be very well, but there is more scope for imagination without them. Hadn't heard that a long time. And as for the waiting, that doesn't matter. We'll just be happy waiting and working for each other and dreaming. Oh, dreams will be very sweet now. Gilbert drew her close to him and kissed her. We've been waiting forever. Then they walked home together in the dusk, crowned king and queen in the bridal realm of love along winding paths, fringed with the sweetest flowers that ever bloomed and over haunted, over -haunted meadows where winds of hope and memory blew. That's the end of the book. Wow. <laughs> the next book's called Anne of Windy Poplars. I didn't realize we were so... <laughs> that was the end. What? Anne of Windy Poplars. So, final chapter. <laughs> How about that? But yay. Happy, happy ending. Okay, guys, hope to see you live at 5 today. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Love y'all. Bye-bye.